how has the pandemic caused cyber threats to escalate in the healthcare industry? Thank you, Martha. Maybe a focus on, on the ransomware is one of the bigger problems. Uh, we are talking about cyber attacks, specifically targeting many of our own customers. Today, you have statistics such as, you know, ransom attack every 10 or 11 seconds, damage of an average $2 million for a business, getting to $4 million with the impact of containment and rebuilding and et cetera, which is significant by itself. So you would think uh, back, why does it happen? Why do you have more runs for more attacks, more sophistications, more files? It's essentially a business model. It works for the attackers. The attackers get money from it. They see that it works. They become more advanced. They become more innovative. They know how to bypass the regulations. They know how to attack the new attack surface. With the movement, uh, as mentioned before, uh, work from home or uh, remote workforce or however you call it, it actually increases the attack surface, right? You need tools, applications to work remotely. You need the same VPN, as, which is considered as a secure device, but essentially it also exposes an attack surface, the VPN itself, and the remote desktop, the virtual application that you would use. The physicians, again, that work from home, from their bring your own devices, choose your own devices, all this PHI that is now resided in their home devices. So you have private health information at risk. So essentially, the attackers also understood this double extortion model and the fact that, okay, if we get into risk the private information, when, if we extort the business, it works better for us. They will pay. And the percentage of uh, organizations, if you look only on the Canada kind of uh, use case, there was a, a review of how many of the businesses paid, half of them paid in just uh, in the last 2021 year. Essentially, this escalated. You have much more youngsters, whether it's Russia or the East uh, Europe, that uh, have nothing better to do than get the good money for attacking at hospitals and healthcare organizations in the US and in Europe, and they do it well. So they innovate, and there is a need to innovate. You mentioned it, Martha, to innovate on the other side, on the side of the vendor, on the side of the businesses. So this is exactly how, uh, where we come with try to turn the table over the, over the attacker, innovate and add preventive deception layer on top of your existing solutions, basically to confuse the attackers and make the attack surface much more harder to attack. What are some of the changes that can help protect pharma and healthcare companies and uh, their resources? Every six months, tabletop exercises, obviously, there is a lack of expertise and there is a need to do those. The justification for this it comes from an average time the attackers are in the network, or at least from the time they hijack the credentials or open the back doors to the time they get back and then attack over the weekends. We find out based on dozens of incident response that we have only in the last couple of months that it usually gets to six seven, eight months in which uh, attackers already compromised at least one of the servers or networks and the organization have its this hole and this foothold is, is there and they don't know about it. If they would do this simulation, if they would do this investigation, even if they take MDR or manage the IR or whatever that will investigate this, they would avoid the end result. Uh, so definitely... There is a need to do it at least twice a year. If there was one thing that the folks in the audience should do to respond to all of these cyber and privacy risks in this COVID-19 world, what do you think they should do or what do you think they should consider? I believe that, again, businesses need to understand, and healthcare need to understand that there is a need of deep depth defense. There is no one solution that solves it all. You have to take care of the different problems with the relevant best solutions you may apply with. And again, as part of the deep depth defense, you should understand that it's not enough detection, visibility. It's important. It's a must, but it's not enough. You want to minimize your response. You want to reduce the attack service. You want to prevent an attack. Prevention can be in the form of education, awareness. It could be in the form of applying uh, innovative techniques such as what we use as a deception, moving target defense, etc. Also is in the form of uh, attack surface reduction, hardening, etc. All those uh, approaches exist. You can apply those. Obviously, innovate is important because attackers will not wait around the corner. We have to turn the table over to, to the attacker. So this is 
The thing I believe we are on the way there. I definitely see many more and more visionary healthcare and other businesses that definitely apply those techniques. And I hope to see more very quickly.